the island of Barbados, and I'm Reverend Ronald Nathan. I'm the minister of the church. Welcome. All right, let's see if we can share the screen. There we go. Share. Everyone seeing my screen? Yes, please. Yes, I can see it. Thank you. Okay, we are going through a series of about five uh, different psalms, what I call the favorite psalms. Last week we looked at psalms. What did we look at last week? Psalm, which psalm? 23. 23. All right, all right. Just getting a feedback, okay? You get tested in this Bible study. Mm. <laughs> all right. So keep your ears and eyes open. Make sure you have a pen and paper. Always be taking notes. All right. Okay, so we went through Psalms 23. And um, although it was just about seven verses, uh, it took us, um, I did all then, and we want to take things a little slower. So it may very well be that this Psalms may... Um, go on uh, through next week. Actually, we did two weeks last. Two weeks for Psalms 23, am I right? Yes, we did. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, here we go. Let me just minimize this. Okay. All right. So we read uh, Psalms 1 from the King James Version and the New Living Version. And the version that will come up as we go through, will be the New Living Translation. Okay, language should be an aid to understanding. Language should be an aid to understanding. All right, so uh, the primary uh, reason for one choosing the translation that you use really ought to be that I have a clear understanding of what the text says. Okay. All right. And we need to know that as we read the Bible, wherever we're reading from, we are feeding both the mind and the spirit. All right. The mind and the spirit. We cannot disengage our mind. Okay, because it's the mind that interprets everything that we receive. All right? Um, whether you touch something, okay, it's the mind that interprets that touch. Okay, uh, if you hear something, it's the mind. If you see it, if you're reading. So therefore, we are getting understanding and we can also get inspiration. Okay? Uh, there are some who feel that they can only get inspiration or get the spiritual meaning of a text without understanding, but that is not so. All right? Uh, in order to be inspired, there has to be an understanding of what the text is saying. Okay. What is the background to the psalm? Psalm 1. Who was the author? Uh, what language was it written? Pardon? I said the author was anonymous, but good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> good afternoon, right? That's right. The author is anonymous. That's Reverend Joseph, I believe. Okay, so this is one of the Psalms that we are not alerted as to who may have written it. Okay. Uh, can anyone uh, tell me who are some of the authors of some of the Psalms? David. Yes, David. Uh -huh. Asap. Yes. Um, Moses. Yes, Moses. Anyone else? Um, Cora. 
Oh yeah, Cora. <laughs> Cora. All right. Asa. Okay. Well, what we are aware of is that there are a number of people. David did write most of it. Uh, don't forget Solomon. Okay. All right. We have a couple um, Psalms from Solomon. So just to say that uh, there are different authors. Uh, what do you think the language, what language would the Psalms have been originally written in? Hebrew? Yes, say that a little louder. Hebrew. That's right. Um, Hebrew. Okay, there may, I believe that there are a few that are, are written in Aramaic. Yeah. Aramaic, which is a language that is actually derived from um, Hebrew. Okay. Uh, we don't know the historical background of this particular psalm, um, but we do know that it follows in the literary uh, tradition of being either a song or a poem. All right? So that's the literary style. Okay. okay, and just to say that asking questions facilitates learning. Okay, never be afraid to ask questions, either of the text or, or of the person presenting the text, right? Asking questions facilitates learning because it opens up other areas. Okay. Would anyone like to tell me what is the difference between Bible reading and Bible study? In Bible study, we pull the we pull each part, each verse apart. We on we try to define anything that we don't know. We find it within biblical terms, not within our local environment we try to get as close to the original interpretation of those of those definitions um well first thing we have to pray for the direction in studying <laughs> and we do the right i mean then we do the breakdown out trying to identify as we said or as you said in the first slide the author was the time frame in which it was written in which it all in an attempt to get an understanding of the verse or the area that you're studying in while reading is more a uh, lack of a better way a superficial um glance through without any deep on deep dive okay okay all right well I'm told that if you want to get pearls, you've got to dive very deep in the sea. All right? Uh, pearls do not stay at the top of the water. And so it is also with Bible study. Um, there is a general meaning or surface meaning that you can get from Bible reading. And it's important to read your Bible but you must also give time to a deeper studying of the Bible, okay? So in other words, with Bible study, we dissect, okay? Um, for those who were in science class in secondary school, you would take apart certain things and then reassemble in order to try to understand how the thing works. Observation is very important. Okay, we need to observe what the text says. Okay, um, so sometimes a text is not as clear as we would like it to be, and the way to understand it is to read other passages of scripture that may speak about the same thing that that text does. 
okay, so that one passage of scripture in one place can help you to understand another passage in another place. Okay, all right, so it's very important that we observe uh, the text. And then we have, as uh, Reverend Deborah told us, there is application or understanding what that text says in that context. The context is the environment within which that scripture was given or it comes out of. All right? So for those who've been following me in the book of Habakkuk, uh, you would know that I, I constantly keep saying Habakkuk was written in the 7th century BC before Christ. That is the historical context. I say that Habakkuk wrote his message for the nation of Judah and for the nation of Babylon. That is the context within which that scripture came to us. Okay, I also explain that Judah was being uh, invaded by Babylon at the time. Okay, all of that tells you the context. So Habakkuk spoke to people at that time in that place. It does not mean that there is no principles or lessons that we could extract from it or what we call extrapolate, take out, and apply into our context. All right? So you have to be able to identify those principles and then apply them in your context. All right? So our learning tip. One's experience of formal school could assist or hinder one's attitude to study of the Bible. Okay? Because in our lives we attach studying, certain things to studying. If we had a bad experience in school, sometimes we are hesitant to want to engage in Bible study because we believe, well, I wasn't good at reading in school or I couldn't remember uh, the poems when we had to say poetry and so forth. But what we really need to do is to commit our Bible study to prayer. We have to ask God to use his Holy Spirit to open up our mind and our spirit to receive his truth. All right? So, here we are reading Psalms 1, and what we want to do is to extrapolate or extract the principles from that text and apply it to our contemporary context. Any questions? None for me. All right. The speed's okay? Mm -hmm. right. Anyone else? Okay, let's continue. So what is the purpose of this psalm? Okay. All right, what you see quite clearly in this psalm is what we call compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. So you will hear about the godly and the ungodly, the righteous and the wicked, Okay, you have a comparing and a contrasting Contrasting. different lifestyles. It's, it's a two roads. Okay, or two roads. Yes. Okay. Faithful, right. A faithful person and, and a faithless person. Oh. Faithful and faithless. Contrast. Okay. okay. Uh, Reverend Joseph, you sound like you have a sermon there, you know. No, I don't. <laughs> that is the rudiments of a sermon, I'm telling you. All right? You've got some bones, so let's put some flesh on it. All right? Well done. Okay, compare and contrast two different lifestyles. 
Okay, remember we said that the Psalms are divided up into several different books? Yeah. Okay. So this Psalm falls into which book? Book one. Yeah. Okay, everybody know what we're talking about here? Yeah. yeah. All right, the Psalms are divided up into five books. Book one is... Um, Chapter 1 to 41. Okay? All right. And I read today that each of these books are linked to the five books. So book okay. one is linked to Genesis. Okay. All right. Um, but um, even more practical than that, if you had all the Psalms on scrolls and you needed to find a Psalm, okay, it was easier if you knew that you were reading one of the Psalms between 1 and 41, you could go just to book one of the Psalms. Yes? In other words, you could have different scrolls for the Psalm. Okay? Um, I don't have a practical illustration uh, of the scrolls to show you how it worked, but a scroll is basically... Um, a large sheet of paper that is rolled and there are rollers at each end. And in mm -hmm. Hebrew, just as in Arabic, you do not read from the left to the right, but you read from the right to the left. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And what you do is you roll one side this way and you roll the other one that way in order to progress in the book mm -hmm. that you're reading. Okay. All right, uh, maybe one day we'll go down to the um, Jewish synagogue in Bridgetown and uh, ask them to take a look at the, the scrolls. All right? Mm -hmm. Anybody been to the synagogue? Yes. No. Yeah, but I'm not so sure they have scrolls there, but okay. All right, all right. Well, uh, we, might have, we might have to help them get a set. <laughs> That's, All right. that's, a, that's a history lesson there. Okay. Psalms 1. What classification does this psalm fall in? Remember we said that there are several different classifications. There are psalms of praise, historical psalms, ceremonial psalms, psalms of penitence, mm -hmm. imprecatory psalms. That's the one that says, Lord, do this to my enemy. Because they've done this to your people. You know, that kind of psalm. They are ethical psalms and they're messianic psalms. Okay? Anybody want to take a guess at what psalm this is? Psalm of praise? Oh, no. I, I suspect we're going to go down the list guessing, right? <laughs> psalm, um... <laughs> Psalm of joy and Psalm of joy that obey. No, um, ethical. Yeah, we have the list of the psalms here, so it has to be one of these seven. And I think I heard the answer. It's an ethical psalm. All right. Ethical, ethical right. meaning ethics of right and wrong. Okay. All right. So blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Okay? Uh, it, it will move you between what is right behavior and wrong behavior. Okay? All right. And then uh, finally, before we actually get to the Psalms itself, just remember that some of the Psalms were written to be sung. All right. mm -hmm. Others were written as poems or poetic yeah. utterances, okay? So some would be singing, and in certain places you'll hear there is instruction to the musicians, all right? So when you're reading the Psalms, you need to take a look and see. If you look at Psalms 4, for example, it says to the chief musician on Niganoth. All right, a psalm of David. Okay, so some of the psalms are 
psalms to be sung, others poetry. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, but worship. Are there some worship, Pastor? Well, uh, all of them would be worship. Okay. All of them could be worship. Okay, so your poetry could be worship. Yeah. You see, uh, we have a thing about worship as a song with a certain kind of beat. But whatever the rhythm, it is still worship. Okay? If you recite it, it is still worship. It is all part of uh, the ensemble of worship. In other words, worship, um, offering is worship. Okay? So uh, we are not putting it in the classification of worship tunes and so forth. All of it is worship. Okay. Um, is that yes. clear, uh, Sister Dan? Yes, it is. Thank All you. right. Okay. So let's proceed. Now, this is the New Living Translation rendering of verse one. Okay. All right. Um, but you know, I speak in tongues, right? So I'll speak in Shakespeare language and then I'll speak in contemporary language. All right. Let's go for Shakespeare. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right. Yeah, ungodly. All right. That is um, okay. The language of the 17th century, actually 16, I think it's 1611 or so. All right. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right. The New Living Translation say, "Oh, the joys of those." who do not follow the advice of the wicked. All right? Okay. And our learning tip here is be careful who you choose to advise you. In other words, be careful of your advisors. Okay. All right? And mm -hmm. the term blessed can mean those who are made holy, wholesome, or worthy. Okay, all right, those who are made holy, wholesome, or worthy. And remember, we have to take that word blessed all the way down because several places you'll see it says, they delight, they are like trees, their leaves neither wither. Okay, so wherever you see they and there in these first verses, it's speaking about those who are blessed. Right. Okay, so, all right, blessed is the man. Again, um, we need to say that in this context, um, the word man is speaking about male and female. Okay, all right, so it's not only men who could walk in the council of the ungodly. Okay, all right, so, um, Men do not have a, a monopoly on sin. Sorry, just give me a second. It's beginning to rain and my window is... Oh, right. Thank you. Okay. All right, so... Uh, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the, the human being, the person who walketh who doesn't walk in that council, who do not seek advice from the wicked. Okay, so we need to be very important about where we get advice. Okay, all right, just because it's on the radio doesn't mean it's true, and just because President Trump says it doesn't mean it's true. Okay, otherwise you may end up drinking vinegar or detergent. Okay, all right. You have to be careful of your advisors. Okay, okay. all right. Uh, there are some people believe because it was on the internet. Okay. Be very careful. All right, Sister Glennis. Sister Glennis. I'm here, but my surroundings are not quiet, so I mute myself. Okay, but just because it's on WhatsApp. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. It doesn't mean it's true. 
Yeah, it doesn't mean it's true. So be careful of your advisors. Okay, all right. Or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. Okay, uh, the King James Version says, nor stand it in the way of sinners, nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. Okay, all right. Um, so be careful who you lime with. Mm -hmm. Okay, be careful who you line with. All right, for um, those in the Eastern Caribbean, we understand lining means hanging out, standing around with. Okay, be careful who you line with because they can have an impact upon you. And we will see that in the next few verses. Okay, and once you're liming with people, you tend to want to join in with what they're doing. Not so much. Yeah? Okay. Uh, my grandmother, uh, sometimes she, it sounded a little crude, but I've learned to appreciate some of her statements. She used to say, if you play with the pigs, you're going to get something on your clothes. All right? I, I'm not allowed to say there's something. It doesn't <laughs> But I think you all could work it out, right? Yes. yes. I think we okay. can manage it. My, gra my grandmother used to say similar things. Okay. All right. Okay. So, who we hang out with have an influence on us. Okay. Even though we may say, I am not involved. Okay. You end up laughing with the jokes that they laugh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You end up wanting to use the same vocabulary that they use. Uh -huh. All right. I remember the first time my grandmother heard me cuss. She said, who were you with? Okay. All right. Because you pick up words. So um, the psalmist David is being... On one hand, very spiritual, but also very, very, I said the psalmist David, sorry, the person who wrote Psalms 1, hmm. okay, um, is being very practical, okay, and really the walk with God is a practical walk, okay, all right, we, we like to spiritualize it and just make it some kind of romantic thing, it's very, very practical, be careful who you align with, and watch mm -hmm. out for the loose talk. So mm -hmm. that's verse one. Any questions? No. No question. Okay. All right. Let's go on to verse. Two. Okay. Um, question here is where are you in the crowd? Okay. Those who are standing, okay, or where you are sitting in regards to the crowd. Um, just to say this, that just because it's a crowd doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay. Righteousness does not need a majority vote. I want to say that again. Righteousness does not require a majority vote. Many times, it's a minority vote. In other words, the majority of people may be on the side of the ungodly rather than on yeah. the side of righteous. That's right. Okay. right. So just because everybody does it doesn't mean you have to do it too. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I really wish that I could connect with some of our young people at this point. Because um, we tend to be very impressionable in our youth. And sometimes as adults, we've been so impressionable that we remain impressionable even as adults. Mm -hmm. Any swing, and we swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody In other words, you will be a leader, not a follower. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Um, so we need to be aware of our environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to say that again. We need to be aware of our environment. Now we could, that means, yes, the people that are around us, but I want to suggest uh, for the WHMS who theme for this second um, year is the Great Commission Environmental mm -hmm. Justice, I believe, okay? That we also need to be aware of the environment. I was having a conversation with uh, Sister Pamela yesterday, and she was telling me about um, there's such a lack of care for the environment. All right. Okay? All right. But the environment has an impact upon us. Okay. All right. The environment has an impact upon us. And that's one of the reasons why I push um, any government that I'm under to make sure and care for all the people in all of our communities. Because if you discriminate against one group in a community, their environment also experiences an impact. Okay? And you find pockets of crime, pockets of lawlessness, and that then will spill over from those areas into other areas. Okay? So you have to be concerned about the whole country. Um, we have to be concerned about our environment. If we pollute the seas, be sure the sea is going to spit onto the shore what we pollute in the sea. Yeah. Okay. Um, but also, if there's pollution coming into our ears, then there would be pollution coming out of our hearts. Mm -hmm. So the psalmist now, who starts off on the negative, because he begins to say, um, blessed is the man that walketh not, okay, nor standeth in the way of, nor sitteth in the seat of. He now turns it and says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. But his delight is in the, and um, the psalmist is going to move from one to the other. He makes the compare and contrast. But they delight in the law of the Lord. The blessed delight in the law of the Lord. And in his law that he meditate day and night. Okay. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Okay. Um, all right, let me first say this. Uh, to delight means to have pleasurable interest. Pleasurable interest. In other words, you get a certain amount of joy from being in the Word of God. Okay, that is what we are being uh, Don't see Bible reading as a chore. Okay. See it as a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, I must read a chapter, otherwise I can't go to bed. Uh, you know, it's not a punishment. It must be, what can I get out of the word of God? I wonder what God wants to say to me today. I wonder what God wants to do in me today. You know, that's pleasurable interest. Okay. Delight. And if you delight, you want to stay in it. Um, I am, um, my grandmother used to quarrel with me because reports used to get home about me and books. I would read a book, walk into school. Okay. I knew the name of the streets. I knew when to move. I would come and stand on the side of the road 
while the traffic and I'm not looking at the lights. Uh, when the person next to me moves, I move, I'm reading. I had a great delight. I couldn't keep my head. Once I start a book, I want to read it until the end. I want to find out what next is in it. Okay, that is delighting in. But now when we think of the law of the law, mm. which is another term for the word of God, we must get delight. Oh, I wonder what is it? I wonder where he's going with this. I wonder what that really means. Okay, and that's why we have to search all the scriptures. And that's why it goes beyond just reading. And then, after you've done that, to meditate. Meditate, meditate speaks of a saturation, of a, a chewing over, um, to use a British term. All right, they used to say, chew it over. Okay? Um, so you hear it, and it, it really comes from the cow that chews its cud. All right. Basically, what it is, it's there are some animals that have two stomachs. All right. Um, so it is able to bring things back from that first stomach back into its mouth, chew it over again, and uh, let it go down. In other words, to squeeze all the goodness out of it. That reminds me of a mango I had today. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you were going so well. You were going so, so well. So well. All I'm saying is that you have to squeeze <laughs> out of it. All right? Okay. We meditate on it day and night. Okay? All right? Um, the fact in that other it, words, think about it, Pastor. In other words? Think, think about it and ask yourself the questions. Yes, yes, oh, yes. You, right. Yes. How you change. Think about what you're reading. Read it. Think about it and then ask yourself the question. Yes. Yes. Okay. And in particular, one of the first questions we need to ask is what is this text asking me to do? Mm -hmm. What is this text asking me to be? Okay. All right. To do, the doing, and the being. Okay? So now we are interrogating the text and allowing the text to interrogate our lives. Okay? So we are asking questions of the text and the text is pointing the finger at us. Okay? All right? Exposing things in our lives. Showing us where we need to grow, showing us our weaknesses, showing us our strengths, all right? Okay, but I want to also pull out here uh, um, a practical point, again, uh, especially for our youths, and because we may be parents and grandparents, we certainly, in our advice and talking with our children and grandchildren, can share this with them. Find out what gives them pleasurable interests because that can facilitate serious study. Okay. That's right. All right, that can facilitate serious study. Okay, um, I have never yet found a young person in a school environment that does not have something that they're interested in. It may not be on the curriculum, but you'll find something that they're interested in. And then if you can use that thing of interest to point them in the way of study, study becomes much more easier when you are having fun, when you are interested in it, when it has got... Um, what we call your curiosity, okay? okay? All right, so I am always curious about what is behind what the writer in the Bible has said, okay? 
I am always curious. That's, that's my curiosity point. I want to know what was it that motivated him or her to have to say this or that. Okay. All right, so, but they delight in the law of the Lord and in this law that they meditate day and night. Day and night. Okay, all right. Now, this does not necessarily mean that David didn't have any work to do, you know. Because we know that, um, well, if it was David, but um, whoever it is, it doesn't mean that they, um, well, there's a particular Jewish sect uh, you see them in New York and in certain parts of London, for example. They spend um, somewhere close to 10 hours just studying the Word of God. All right? Or the Jewish scriptures, as they call it. Okay? They tend not to take up any secular work. Mm -hmm. That's their work. Okay? Um, we don't always have that opportunity. But in the day and in the night, we can be meditating on the word of God. In our workplaces, we can be meditating on the word in the sense that how does the word of God help us to execute our work? Are we doing it ethically? Are we working with the right attitude? I'm staying a little too long on this, but I just need to say this. If every day you go to work, you come home complaining about your work, you need to change your work. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you don't have to change your work, then you need to change your attitude about your work. Okay? All right. All right. Um, it is dishonorable to God to be constantly complaining about your work to the point that it gets you stressed and it invites sickness in your body, sickness in your mind, okay? We, we need to attend to work joyfully. Um, work was given to the first couple in the Bible before they sinned. Remember, Adam was given work uh -huh. to name the things in the garden. Okay? So work is not a punishment. We are supposed to get delight in work. It's supposed to utilize our skills or teach us new skills. It's supposed to make us feel productive. All right? We are not supposed to be depressed because of our work. Any questions? I know that could be considered controversial by some, but... Uh... <laughs> no questions? All right. Let me check my time. Five minutes. Um, all right. I'll do the next verse and then I will stop. So delight yourself in the Lord. Okay. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. We ought to find delight in the Lord. Okay. All right. You know what? One of the things I like about the word delight. Okay, if we use um, Caribbean um, speak, instead of saying the light, delight, okay, all right, let the light shine, okay, in your life, okay, all right, delight, okay, let there be illumination, okay, all right, let the word light up your life. All right, I'm going to do this first and then stop and take any um, questions if there are. And we will continue uh, next week with the rest of this hour. Okay? They are like trees planted along the riverbank. 
bearing fruit each season. Okay, who are the they? That's a question for the listeners. Who are the they? The believer, the godly, the godly believer. Right, right. Okay, remember the blessed. Okay, they are called blessed in verse one. They are the ones who delight in the law of the Lord and who meditate, okay, in his word day and night. And those people, those people are like a tree planted along the riverbanks. In other words, they are being constantly nourished. Okay, constantly nourished, nourished. Okay, all right, and when they're being constantly nourished, what happens? They bear fruit. Okay, all right, constantly. Okay, all right. Okay, because they are they're getting sunlight from the leaves, uh, through their leaves, okay, they're drawing in water and nutrients through the roots. Okay. They become strong, all right, so their roots go deeper and deeper, but having drawn the nutrients, they bear fruit each season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I uh, just pray, Lord, you know, May is here. Let May be the month that we start lifting the restrictions uh, from this co coronavirus. Virus, yeah. Yes, so that we can begin to move because yes. I want to see some of the fruit that comes from having trees that are planted along the riverbank mm. and, and being enriched with the teachings of the word of God, okay? That are being enriched through prayer, okay? That are being rich, enriched through praying and fasting. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay, there's fruit to come, brothers and sisters. All right, there's fruit, okay? All right, you see that little bud? It's the sign of a fruit. Yes. It's a sign of a fruit. The excitement at coming around the word of God, wanting to be online, sharing all the services, it's going to bring fruit, okay? And even while we are online, we are bringing fruit. Because there are people Amen. receiving and hearing about us. Amen. All right? So there's fruit. Okay? So um, I want to encourage each and every one. Have your own time of Bible reading and also Bible study. Okay? If you know the passage of scripture that we are going to be dealing with, you read it through a few times. Uh, sometimes before I preach from a scripture, I may read it a dozen, maybe even 20 times. And I read it from all sort of different translations so I could get everything out of it. Okay? All right, because... I'm looking forward to fruit. I'm drawn on the yeah. nutrients. I'm drawn on the nutrients. So now we're looking forward to bearing fruit. Okay. A Christian who eats regularly at the table of the word of God and does not bear fruit, they have an abnormal digestive system. Something wrong. 
something wrong. Okay? All right, there's either blockage in the bowels or there's a blockage in the stomach. Okay? Or there's a problem in the higher areas of digestion, in the throat, in the mouth. Okay, something's got to be wrong. You can't be eating and drinking and not bearing fruit. Okay, the fruit comes out in your strength. Okay, in your vitality. You can't be lethargic. Okay, all right. Uh, your fruit comes out in your attitudes, your thoughts, your behaviors, your habits. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Christians must want to be able to share the Christ that is in them. Christ is bursting in them, wanting to come out. That's how it's supposed to be. Your fruits are a reflection of where you spend your time and what you absorb from your environment. Okay? Whether you are by the rivers of water, by the banks of the river, we are going through it. All right? Your fruits are a reflection of where you spend your time and what you absorb from your environment. So if you are getting the word of God, if you are reading the word of God, if you are praying, if you are fasting, if you are having fellowship with the saints, if you are having opportunities to give in terms of evangelism or in terms of charity to your neighbor, okay, these are positive involvement that Christians should have. And in turn, it bears good fruit. Yeah, I think it's Philippians, uh, the fourth chapter, that says, think on these things, that which is pure, that which is of good report. There are things that we ought to be thinking about. All right. Well, I want to stop there. Are there any questions? I, I have a question in terms of preparation. Would you like us for Bible study to read both the King James Version and the New Living Translation? That, that would be um, helpful, yes. If you have access to one, all right, um, please do. Uh, what okay. it just helps you to do, sorry? No, go ahead. Yeah, what it helps you to do is it allows you to look at what is being said from a different angle okay um, because i used the good news and the new international version well, uh, that, that's fine and it's interesting the the different emphasis yes yes yeah by the yeah. way the prime minister is about to address the nation just thought i'll let you know Thank you very much. Well, let's say a prayer both for the Prime Minister and for ourselves. Um, Sister Walters, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. All Thanks right. to you and my sisters and pastors who are joining in this Bible study. Oh. I thank God that um, he has allowed me to take part. Thank you very much for having me. And I oh. hope to see you again. Thank you too. Thank you too. Okay. I hope to be, I hope to visit you in person when all this is finished. For sure. Amen. But in the meantime, Let's... visit us on all our other online so that by the time you get here, yes, I will join the family. I, I will. I will try. I will try. Thank okay. you. Okay. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Three. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity to look into your word. We ask, O oh God, that your word would feed us. O oh God, help us to chew over that which we've heard. Help us to digest it.
help us to uh, assimilate it in our bodies so that it may give us the spiritual and physical energy that we need to survive in this society. We pray, oh God, that you make us excited about your word, that we'll take delight in your word. And oh God, even more so, that your will will be done in us as we serve you. God bless each and every one who's been on this call today. And we pray for those of our numbers who have not been able to be on, that you still will be with them and protect them and allow them to have the facility to join us again. Yes. God bless us, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.